This manga adaptation is going to take over the anime scene. Hell's Paradise is one of the newest manga adaptations written by Yuji Kaku. It ran from 2018 to 2021 with 13 volumes. It's part of the Dark Shonen Trio. The premise of this manga follows the story of a ninja known as Gabimaru the Hollow. This implies that he's very empty and void of all emotions. He's set to be executed for his crimes. However, his superhuman body and reflexes subconsciously protect him from harm. The ironic part is the duality of this character. Gabimaru believes he is ready to die and begs for his life to be taken. He believes his life to be meaningless and his only purpose to kill. His wife was merely given to him as a pawn and he holds no true love for her. But this is also a lie made up by the ninja to deceive himself from his true emotions. Subconsciously, he refuses to die because the love he has for his wife Yui is real. She is the eighth daughter to the Iwakakure Iwa Iwagakure. She is the eighth daughter to the Iwagakure chief. Due to this, the executioner Yamada Asemon Sagiri decided to give him a pardon, but with one condition. Gabimaru and a team of death row convicts find the key to immortality. This is basically the Japanese Suicide Squad. Each member has an executioner partner up with them, and they must both return alive to receive the pardon. This is where the story kicks off. We get to see an interesting dynamic between Gabimaru and Yui. She knows that deep down he has a heart and isn't this hollow monster people make him out to be. She understands what it feels like to be looked at differently due to the scar on her face. She's the first person to say to Gabimaru, are any of us truly without sin? You seem to be suffering a great deal, but acts of regret and reflection are part of atonement. If even a single person who accepts you should appear, then is that not enough? This is directly linked to the principles of many different religions, the idea of atonement of sins and forgiveness through repenting. This is why Gabimaru continues to fight to survive and agrees to go on the mission. In episode 1, we see a time lapse of all the failed attempts to take Gabimaru's life. We learn that the chief who married his daughter to Gabimaru is very cruel. He He's actually the one who's trying to kill him. We start to hear rumors that some people have found an elixir of life, a way to live forever located in Shinsinkyu, otherwise known as Hell's Paradise. Immortality isn't a new concept. The idea has been around for as long as stories were being written. One of the first accounts is in the Epic of Gilgamesh. The warrior battles with his companion Enkidu. The gods decide Enkidu must die because of the things he has done. Gilgamesh is scarred by the death of his friend. He begins the search of the key to immortality, only to be told that what you seek can not be found, for when the gods created man, they let death be their share. This parable sparked the idea of an elixir of immortality with many different cultures. Chinese scriptures have talked about immortality since the early 1500s, and real voyages were made to find said elixir. In Christianity, the wandering Jew was cursed with eternal life for his slights against Jesus. In Arthurian lore, Galad was one of the only people to drink from the Holy Grail to become immortal. These all stem down from the original tales of Gilgamesh. Now there are countless examples of immortality in popular culture. From vampires to witches to demigods and more. So it's no shock Hell's Paradise uses this as its plot. As we see people return dead from the island, they are covered in flowers with a euphoric look on their face. In Greek mythology, there are many cases of people being turned into flowers as a curse or for protection. Primarily, they are cursed by the goddess of flowers, Flora. This is interesting as flowers are seen as a symbol of peace and comfort. This is why we give them to those who have passed on. Also, the look of euphoria isn't something to be looked over. Flowers are a common ingredient in most psychoactive medications. These tend to give people a similar feeling as we see within the show. However, in this case, the dead or the dying become flowers themselves. It's like a slightly less creepy version of The Last of Us. Slightly. To choose the 10 convicts, they have a Hunger Games style brawl, with all the death row convicts killing each other off. Gabimaru is hesitant to kill because he finds it pointless with no meaning behind it. But when the crowd turns on him, he showcases his true power and thus begins the slaughter. When his executioner looks at Gabimaru's reflection in her sword, she sees a similar burden within him that she feels. A visual of hands clawing all over their naked bodies flashes into her mind. She searches for a way to kill without feeling guilt. It's ironic as we are brought into this world naked and powerless. When she is plagued by these visions, the feeling is quite similar. At the end of the battle, the 10 comics are chosen, with my favorite being Kunoichi Yuzira of Kishu. I mean, she could step on me. And thus begins the journey for the elixir of immortality. My personal opinion on immortality is that it does exist. The way I view immortality is the legacy you leave behind once you're gone. I believe that many of the parables we read about immortality have this deeper meaning behind them. Coming from someone who's read most of this manga, I'd say it's worth a watch for sure. I'd give it 8 peppers out of 10. Click here to see how Garp could have beaten the Pirate King.